Welcome to the Vineyard Church of Central Illinois' online campus, Vineyard Live. Whether you stumbled upon the site or you regularly attend here, we're really excited that you joined us. At Vineyard Live, our call is to continue the works of Jesus in the power of the Spirit here, near, and far away. And wherever you are in the world, we want to invite you to join us in that mission. At Vineyard Live, it's our hope that you would powerfully experience God connect with people that really care about you, and be empowered to live a kingdom lifestyle, naturally supernatural. Yeah, so here's what you can expect at Vineyard Live. We'll open with an opening song, a few announcements, a welcome, a thought-provoking message from one of our pastors. And then we'll continue into some powerful worship, and then some awesome prayer ministry at the end. I promise it's well worth it. Hang out till the end. So how did this Vineyard Live thing really work? You know, it's our belief that wholeheartedly that church is way more than a building. Church is about people. And to really get the full community experience, be sure to participate in the chat rooms in the comment section and really get to know the people that you're interacting with. This is an amazing opportunity to connect with people all over the globe. So be sure to take advantage of it. Yeah, and you might have a question from time to time. And if you do, that's great. Just click over in the chat room and talk to somebody with host next to their name. They'd be more than happy to answer your questions for you. Also, at any given time that you feel like you need prayer for anything for yourself or for family, please click on the link below and it'll connect you with one of the hosts one-on-one -on -one, and they'll pray for you privately. The Vineyard Live experience doesn't have to end after an hour. You can find more information at thevineyardchurch.us or email us directly, vineyardlive at thevineyardchurch.us. We would love to answer any questions and really connect with you. Again, welcome to the Vineyard Church's online campus, Vineyard Live. Good morning. How are y'all doing this morning? I heard only one good. Anything else? Ah, there, we're alive. You got an extra hour of sleep. On the seventh day, God created daylight saving so that we could all rest. Well, welcome to Vineyard. I'm Daniel. We're going to sing a song about how awesome Jesus is. So just want to invite you to stand and join us.
let everybody know that love has come, love has won. Let it be known, let it be known that I got reigns with the blessed, blessed on the throne. Let it be known, let everybody know that love has come, love has won. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just want to welcome you to the vineyard, meet your neighbor, ask them their name, and whether they like to stay up late or sleep in. Hey everyone, and welcome. My name's Dan Putman, and here's what's going on at the vineyard. Mom to Mom is having a special event here at the Urbana campus. We're bringing in author of Heart at Homes, Jill Savage, and she's doing a special morning event and it's just for moms. You can register online. Also, Vintage is doing a special event Friday, November 15th. We're bringing over 60 buckets of soup to Restoration Urban Ministries to bless the residents there. You can check out your Vintage newsletter for more details and information on that. Also, pull out one of these guys from the seat in front of you. This is our Connect card. We'd ask if you're new that you would fill out the information on the front and let us know about any questions or prayer requests that you might have. Please stay tuned for some more information about our holiday outreaches. Christmas season is upon us, and if you haven't become involved with our holiday outreach events, it's not too late. Visit the tables out in the commons after today's service and find out how you can reach out and bless those in need this Christmas. This year, we can be a blessing together. Hi, I'm Robbie Dawkins. And I am excited that we are going to be having my friend Bob Hazlett come here to the vineyard and be doing another More Love, More Power conference. This is going to be an exciting weekend where you're going to be understanding how to unlock more of the prophetic voice of God in your life and to others. Bob is a very gifted prophetic minister that has been speaking around the world and doing incredible work in the church. You will not want to miss this incredible weekend where he is going to be helping unlock our identity to destiny and understanding the ways that God wants to use us as a voice to the world in a powerful way. I'm going to be there, and I can't wait to see you there. Yeah, we are really excited about that conference, and we wanted to make it really accessible, so we extended our early bird rate. It's still just $35. We've also opened up some per session um, rates, so you can come on Friday or just on Saturday night or Saturday morning. Whatever, whatever you can make, I just, we just want to encourage you. You know, Robbie's going to be there. I'm going to be there. And hey, we're I'll really excited too. what God wants to, yeah, Chris will be there. That's right. You, know, you forgot me. Sorry, sorry. See, I've got some fans. See? <laughs> shout out. He's got a fan club, yeah. That's good. <laughs> you can pick up your $10 as you walk out the door. That's right. Uh, so welcome to the vineyard. Um, my name is Daniel, and this is... Hey, I'm Chris. Yeah, you're right. And if you guys didn't know, look at that. Te look at those people back there. He's got his own little fan club. It's awesome. Paparazzi. If you want to join the fan club, you can sign up online. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we are one church in many locations. I didn't know if you knew that, but we are at the Urbana campus, but we also have four other campuses uh, that meet in Danville and Paxton and Sullivan and Charleston, and we just launched a fifth campus online called Vineyard Live. Very, very exciting. Yeah, I am too, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But if you're a guest here with us, like the video said with uh, Daniel Putman up there, grab that Connect card in the, well, mine's kind of wrinkled, in the seat pocket in front of you and fill it out. Even if you've been a guest here one, two, three, five, even 20 times, if you've never filled one out, please do so. We're a large church with lots going on around here. We'd love to get you connected. Oh, and if you're online, you can register for a chat room, and you can chat with us live. Yeah, that's awesome. Hi, everybody online. 
Shout who, out to my wife and my kids at home. How you doing? Hey, guys, we have about 100 people right now watching us live. Give a shout out to the online campus. Yeah. <laughs> so along with a, a lot of the other roles that Chris and I play here, um, we are very pr privileged to be part of this new endeavor for the online campus called Vineyard Live. Our mission for it is to equip and empower people to continue the works of Jesus in the power of the Spirit here, near, and far away. And online is an amazing way. You know that statistically, most people check out a church online before they ever walk in the door. So here's one way that you can... Oh, Ab, before actually I do that, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's been happening online last yeah, few Yeah, it's weeks. been really cool. Just in five short weeks, we've reached out to places that are outside of the U.S., like Mexico, China, people to the north, like Canadians up in Canada, the U.K., Sweden... China, Japan, UK, I said that right, France, yeah, there's like all kinds of places. Like I went home last night and checked the numbers, just a little over 300 people in foreign lands are watching us live right now. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So here's how you can help. There's people that you know, friends, relatives, uh, fa just close family members, classmates, and maybe they would never set foot in a church, but they're, they're curious, like Vineyard Live is a great place to invite them to. It's live.thevineyardchurch.us, and you can just invite them and say, hey, just, just check it out. And maybe they live far away from this place. There's not a local campus that they could go to. This is a great way for them to get connected. So I just want to encourage you to invite people. We really believe, like even through a, a screen, a computer screen, you can encounter the presence of God. People have been uh, healed, set free of stuff. It, as, as we've even, even been chatting with people, and, and praying with people online, we've, we've been seeing amazing results as, as the Holy Spirit just pours out on them right where, right where they are. So it's really cool. Yeah, it really is cool. Hey, and if you're interested at all about this online campus and what we do, there's an interest meeting today at 1230 in C2. Hey, it's free pizza, Jet's Pizza, and a salad's good stuff. You guys ought to come and check it out, at least just for the free food. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, well we... Before, before you say anything, i got to give a shout-out to Glenn, Rutledge, and the security team. They made me do this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they do a good job. Give a round of applause. We do have a security team, and they are awesome. They keep us all safe. So anyway, we're really excited to launch a new series called God Calling. And so I just want to invite up my good friend, Dr. Robert Putty, the putster, Putman. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Vineyard. I'm glad you're here with us. Who, like me, thinks that fall back is the single best morning of the year? Right? Thank you, Jesus, for fall back. I'm excited just about that. <sighs> Welcome to everybody here live. Welcome to everybody watching live in another place or online or whatever. It's just really good to be with you here. I um, want to give a shout out to Paxton. Paxton's doing baptisms today. So we've got more people joining our, our big family. I just love that we're so big that we can't fit in one room anymore, right? Isn't that awesome? So we just celebrate, and we celebrate with that. When one part of the body rejoices, we all celebrate together, Paul says. So there's, there's, there's a, something to celebrate in Paxton. That's awesome. I'm going to be kicking off a new sermon series today that we've titled God Calling. And, and you know, I'm really, really excited about this series. I have been feeling for a while, for a few months, that God is beginning to stir something with this idea of calling, this idea of destiny. You know, there's few things that I can think of that would be a bigger shame than to reach the end of your life and to look back on it and feel like it didn't matter. Feel like you didn't make a mark, you never had an impact, that the, the destiny that you were called to See, we as believers believe that God calls us to something. In fact, it even says he's predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. He has set forth a destiny in front of you to walk into. And, and we have the opportunity to learn how to engage with that and walk into that, and we have the opportunity to miss it. And I don't want to look back at the end of my days and regret. I don't want to look back at the end of my days and feel like, man, you know, I never, I never really heard it. I never really got it. 
there were things that I, I could have done. There were things that I should have done. God put me here for a reason, and I never found it. And now it's too late. I don't know if you're like me, but I've noticed a lot of people have that haunting fear. What if I'm not catching what I'm here for? What if I never catch it? What if, what if, what if at the end of the day, my life hasn't made a difference? See, we, we have a hope that it can. I believe that, that, you know, we can look back like Paul says at the end of his life. He says, man, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. Now I'm going home. But he didn't look back with regret. He didn't look back saying, man, I don't know if I caught it. He looked back and he said, I did everything. I was faithful to the call of God on my life. Now I can go home satisfied. I believe that we can, it can be said of us like it's said of David in Acts 13. It says, after he served the purpose of God in his generation, he slept with his fathers. God has called you to something. Like that, that thought in and of itself would be enough <laughs> for, for a message or a series. God has called you to something. The, the, I mean, the guy who made it all, the guy who's on the top of the hill, who's, 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 who's over everything, he reached down and he picked you specifically for something. He's, he's put something on your life that nobody else can do. That's, that's the journey of this thing called calling. It's exciting, it's amazing. And you know, I believe I woke up yesterday and I just felt just a sense of, of, of a shift in the spirit. And I believe that there's grace for a new season. Grace for a season for us to engage with our destiny, engage with our calling in a new way. So this series we're going to be exploring, you know, what, what is the call of God? What does it sound like? How do you recognize it? And then once, once you've, you've heard the call, how do you live it out? We get one shot at this thing. We get one life to live. Let's make it count. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you that every person listening, you have called to something. That there's not a single person hearing this that you haven't called. There's not a single person hearing this that isn't here to make a mark, to leave a legacy, God. I thank you for that. God, we're hungry to hear your voice calling. We're hungry to respond. God, I'm just asking, even, even in the series, even as I speak today, God, apprehend us with a call. Make it go so deep in us, God, that we can't say no. Make it go so deep in us, God, that it changes the course of our life. God, I thank you that this is for everybody. There's not a person left out. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the first, the first question that we need to think about with this idea of calling is this. What are we looking for with a call? Where, where should we be listening? Where should we be paying attention? Because, you know, I'm convinced that there's a lot of people who spend a big portion of their life looking for a calling in the wrong place, and so they never hear it. In, in the scriptures, we see some amazingly dramatic examples of calling. You know, you've got Moses, for example, who's, who's the, the deliverer of the people of Israel and like one of the biggest figures in the Old Testament. And, and Moses, he has this amazing experience where he's, he's chilling out in the wilderness. He's like watching his father-in-law's flock and he sees this bush, which is like on fire. And, and he, he, he sees the thing, and he notices it's burning, but it's not like burning out. Like the bush isn't burning up. It's just on fire, but it's not going away. And he's like, well, that's weird. I've never seen that before. So he walks over to check it out and winds up having a conversation with God, where God says, hey, I'm sending you. You're going to go deliver the Israelites from slavery. Or we have Samuel, who's like the prototypical prophet. He's the first prophet that arrives in Israel, and he raises up the line of kings. And as a young boy, he's serving the priest in the temple. And one night as he's sleeping, God audibly calls him, Samuel, Samuel, with a literal voice. He thinks it's his, his, his tutor the first, the first two times, and then eventually Eli, the priest, figures it out and says, no, it's God calling. Respond to God. 
He has this conversation with God. We have Esther, who's, who's raised up as the queen in a time when Israel is in foreign captivity. And, 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 and there's this situation where this guy has plotted to, to kill the Jewish people. And, and Esther's uncle, Mordecai, finds out. And he goes and he has this conversation with her. And, and he says, Esther, you were raised up for such a time as this. God has raised you up to deliver the Jewish people right now. You're called to this. We have the Apostle Paul, who's um, Saul at the time. He's, he's on his way to a, to a village to persecute Christians, actually. And Jesus shows up and encounters him while he's on the road. This bright light flashes, blinds him, knocks him over. And, and through, through the course of him being blind for three days and then being healed, Jesus calls him as an apostle to go to the nations with the message. These are incredible examples of calling. And let me be the first to say that if you have an experience like that, take it. God does do that stuff still. He does. He, he intersects our lives in amazingly dramatic ways. And if you have a calling experience like that, hold on to it because there's a good chance you'll need it. You're going to look back on it and say, you know what? That's the proof that I have. Because if you have a call like that, you probably have a journey. That's like their journeys were too, which was not easy. But the fact is, is that these people, none of them had God living inside of them. See, we as believers, we have something not in common with any of those people when they got their calling, which is that when we put our faith in Jesus, he makes us a new creation. He makes us a new person that's different than the person we were. We're cleansed, we're pure, we're holy, and God actually moves inside of us. And so the journey of the believer is not trying to find God on the outside, primarily. It's learning to discover him within. And when God speaks, when God calls, as believers, he's not calling from the outside. He's calling from the inside. And the fact is, is though it's true that we have what I would call a specific call, a personal call, something that God has called you to, the fact is, is that you already have a call beyond that, whether you've heard your specific call or not. See, there's a general call, a call that exists to every believer. It's the call that was first given to Adam and Eve when they were created in the garden. In Genesis 1.26, it says this, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. The original call on humanity was a call to be not to do. Notice that. This is, this is an important thing. Most of us are looking for our calling for something that God's going to tell us to do. Adam and Eve were called primarily to be. Make them in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Out of that being, out of being a representation of who God is to this planet, they were to do things, namely to rule. Why? Because they were a representative of the king and king's rule. So the call was a call to be, and out of that being comes action. Jesus renews that call to every believer in John 20, 21. When he breathes on the disciples, he says, Receive the Holy Spirit as the Father sent me, so I send you. Jesus was the one that came to reveal God. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was the visible image of the invisible God. And now he says, I send you the same way God sent me. That means that you and I are to be the visible image of the invisible Christ. That's why we're the body of Christ. We flesh him out. We reveal him to this world. And the call that already exists on every person's life is to reveal Jesus. That's a call to be him to the world. But beyond that general call, there does exist a specific call for each of us. In Ephesians 4, Paul puts it this way. He says, I therefore, prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And he's going to start by talking about that general calling. Okay? With all humility and gentleness, with patience, 
bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you are called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. All of us are called to that. We are called to one God. We are called to one faith. We are called to one hope. We're called to that already. But, it says, grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. You see, the way that we get to our specific call, the way that we get to the call that you have on your life specifically is through the road of this general call. It's, it's through the road of the calling that all of us already have that you begin to have build a bridge to your specific calling personally. I'm beginning to walk in some, some areas of my specific call. It's really exciting. We've got this class called the School of Kingdom Ministry here. It started here about uh, three years ago as, as a class, and the Lord's just breathed on it, and it's grown, and now it's in like 30 places. Most of them are around the country, a few of them in other countries. God's using it, and, and, and as leading that, I'm beginning to walk in some aspects of my specific call to equip the body of Christ. But the way that I got there was this. You know how the School of Kingdom Ministry started? It started as a small group. It started as four people meeting in a dank basement. It wasn't glorious. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't, it wasn't speaking, speaking to the nations. It was speaking to three other people. There's, there's not a person in here that couldn't be trained to do the same thing that I did, lead a small group. The way I got there was through engaging with the normal everyday stuff that God had already called me to, loving the people in front of me, gathering and leading the people around me. What are you doing with your general call? How are you revealing Jesus to your spouse? How are you revealing Jesus to your family, at your job, the way that you spend your time, your energy, your money? See, a lot of us want to leapfrog over that straight to our specific call. We want to jump past that to something that we feel God has called us to, and he probably has. But the way that you get to be faithful with much is you're faithful with little first. Walk, walk the journey of the general call. Be Jesus to somebody. Because what happens is as, as you begin to understand and engage with this general call, you see, the general call is about this. It's about who is God. Because if I'm to represent him, I need to know who he is. And as I engage with that seriously and I say, God, who are you? I want to be you to the world. As we find him, he shows us who we are. Jesus is walking down the road in Matthew 17. And he just pops this question by his disciples. So, you know, who do people say that I am? What's the word about me on the street? And they're like, oh, some people think you're Jeremiah. Some people think you're John the Baptist, one of the prophets, whatever. He's like, well, what do you guys think? Peter goes, oh, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus gets stoked. He's like, yes, it's awesome. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. In other words, God told you that. You didn't figure that out. And what's the next thing he says? And I say to you, you are Peter. And on this rock, this revelation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. As soon as Peter sees who Jesus is, Jesus tells him who he is and gives him a calling. So we engage with this question, God, who are you? How can I represent you to the world? And as we seriously engage with that question, then God begins to reveal to us who we are and how we're specifically gifted to reveal him to the world. Bob Hazlett, the conference speaker who's, who's coming this weekend, um, he, says, he says the same principle this way. He says, if you learn to love what you do, you'll get to do what you love. If you learn to take the everyday stuff, the normal stuff of being Jesus, and you love that as unglorious as it is, as unexciting as it is, you'll get to do what you love eventually. 
as we, as we engage with this idea of, God, who are you? How can I flesh you out? And he begins to show us who we are. We begin to understand that there's a way that he's gifted us. There's a measure of grace on our lives that's Christ's gift, as Paul said in Ephesians 4, which is to reveal him in a way that no one else can. That's the question of your personal call. How can you reveal Jesus in a way no one else ever could? See, each of us, we're like a picture of God from a different angle. And, and, and all together, you see a more complete picture. All together, the world looks at us and says, oh, Jesus is like that. Oh, but he's also like that. And he's also like that. And, and we round him out. And if you don't learn how you've been specifically gifted to reveal him, there's a piece of Jesus that the world is never going to see. Wouldn't that be a shame? So the questions we should be asking are not, God, what amazing thing have you called me to do? But God, who are you? And who am I? It's, it's a relational journey. It's not a journey where God wants to speak to us once. Say, I want you to do this awesome thing, now go. It's a lifelong journey where God calls us to something. He's already called us to something. And then he calls us to something again and again and again because he wants to walk the journey with us. And the way that we begin to move from this general calling to our more specific personal calling, it happens when something of God begins to arrest our heart. We can look at the burning bush, for example, Moses. I brought that up earlier. And we can say, man, I'm waiting for a burning bush experience. Okay, that's great. I would like one as well. But the thing you got to realize is that the burning bush was not the beginning of Moses' journey of calling. It was actually his commissioning. His journey of calling had been happening far, far earlier than that. It says this in Exodus 2. One day, when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and he looked on their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. So this is Moses at, at 40 years old. He's been raised by the Egyptian royalty. And one day he, he, he steps out of the palace complex and he's, he's surveying his people. He still identifies with the Israelites even though he's been raised by the Egyptians. And he sees a conflict happening where an Egyptian is mistreating one of the Hebrews. And something in him responds. Something in him begins to bubble up. Something in his heart looks at this thing and can't just let it go. So what does he do? He intervenes. Did he intervene in the best way possible? No. He took, he took the matter into his own hands and he tried to accomplish with his own strength, in his own methods, what was burning in his heart. That's what many of us do with our journey of calling. Something begins to burn in our heart and we try and accomplish it with our own means, with our own methods. It doesn't work, but that doesn't mean you're not called to that. It means that God has a different way, and you need to learn to do it his way. So Moses freaks out and kills the Egyptian, and he buries him. Now, probably not a good idea. He gets busted, and as a result, he has to flee out to the wilderness. And what happens as soon as he gets there is this. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. He gets out to the wilderness, and he sees the same story happening again. The people of God are being mistreated. The people of God are suffering injustice. Where it was originally the Hebrew people, now it's these priest daughters. Man, they're being oppressed, and that same thing in him responds, this is not okay. And he stands up, and he delivers them. This thing in Moses' heart, he could run away from his original circumstances, but that thing was gripping him. He couldn't get away from that. And what happens is this, for 40 years, that thing marinates in his heart before he gets to the burning bush. For 40 years, this passion, this thing had gripped him about the people of God need deliverance. 
And then he has this experience at the burning bush where he discovers that what had been gripping his heart all along was originally in God's. Because God says, you go to Pharaoh and you tell him, let my people go. That the passion that Moses had to see the people of God delivered was originally a passion of God's, and he didn't even know it. And when he discovers that this passion in his heart originally began as a passion in God's heart, and the two become together, bang, that's the synthesis of your calling right there. The journey that we have is this. We engage with God, and what happens is something of God begins to arrest our heart. Something begins to bubble up inside of us. And when we discover that that thing that's coming in our heart originally began in God's heart, that's where we begin this journey of moving towards our calling. It works exactly the same way for us as it did for him. Scriptures say that Christ dwells in your heart through faith. If the journey of calling is a journey of discovering how it is that we can shine forth God to this world in a way that's uniquely us, then you need to find where God lives within you. Where does he live? In your heart. The, the, most of us, or, or many of us, maybe I should say, are looking for a burning bush when God's speaking in our heart. We're looking for him to say something on the outside. Hey, buddy, buddy, this is God. No, I'm up here. Yeah, yeah, that's right, me. Here's what you need to do. That's what we want. When what's happening is our heart is being gripped by something, and we're not seeing that that's the movement of Jesus within the heart. When we find him in there, that's the voice of God calling. And what happens is, when our heart sees something like that, the way that we walk out our calling is, is we, we live from the perception that we have in our heart. We live from the place that our heart sees. It says this, Abraham's journey. It says this in Hebrews 11. Now, first of all, the whole context for this is caught with an amazing verse, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things, or I should say that right, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. What does that mean? Faith, it's the conviction of things unseen. It's when your heart sees something your eyes can't. That's what faith is. Seeing is believing. It's just not seeing here. It's seeing here. Faith is the conviction of things unseen. So it says this, by faith, by seeing something in his heart, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to, his, to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Abraham has this experience where God calls him. And what happens is he responds in faith. That means he responds by living according to what his heart has seen in the call. What's he looking for? He's looking for a city that God has built. Somehow, something of Abraham reaches through into the invisible world and sees that in the kingdom of God there exists a place that's not been built by man but by God. And as soon as he sees that thing, his life begins to be centered and focused around the perception of his heart. And he goes out in search of what his heart sees. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. Unfortunately for Abraham, he lived on the wrong side of the cross. When he could see into the kingdom, but he couldn't get to it. Fortunately for us, that's not the case, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. So what happens is our heart reaches through and sees something in the kingdom, and that place becomes as real to us as the world around us. That place becomes our home, actually. And as we live with our heart in touch with that place, that is the very substance of the thing that we see being drawn into this world. The, the bridge between the dreams of God and this world is the human heart. When we live in touch with that, that 
sense, that perception that draws his world into ours. Having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear they are seeking a homeland. When Abraham saw that there existed a city that God had built, that city became his home. No longer was the place Ur that he grew up home. That's why he leaves. He's like, oh, I'm not at home anymore. I, I got to go find it. As soon as my heart sees that reality, that reality becomes my home, and I have to live from it. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them what? A city. You see, the journey of faith, the journey of calling, is when something in our heart reaches through and grabs onto something in the kingdom, and that place becomes home. Abraham lived out that calling. He lived out what he saw in his heart. And did he ever find it in the natural? No. But when he passed on to the other side, God says, welcome home. This is the city that you've been living from all along. This is the place that your heart saw all along. Welcome home. The journey that we have, the journey of our calling, is the exact same journey. It's a journey where something in the kingdom apprehends our heart, and it becomes home. You can, guys, you can see I'm passionate about this, because this is my story. Something of God has gripped me and ruined my life in the best possible way. And I can't get back to where I was, and I don't even want to. I'm not, see, I haven't thought about what I left. Guys, I have a PhD in quantum physics, okay? Those of you who don't know that, now you know, okay? I was not planning on going into the life that I have now. I was kind of headed on a different trajectory, right? Something of God apprehended me. Something about his goodness, something about his power, something about his kingdom that he longs to intersect our lives and set things right. Gripped me. And I couldn't go back to that. No longer was that my home. Now the only thing I can live for, the only thing that I can get up and pursue is that thing being more and more real in the lives of everyone around me. Guys, that's what it means when it says the righteous will live by faith. It means that those of us in Christ are meant to live according to the perception of our heart. That thing is the way that we're designed to live as believers according to what our heart sees. What's arresting your heart? What is God gripping you with? What's wrecking you, preventing you from ever going back to life as normal? That's the question of calling. Be him to the world. Show who he is. And as as you do that, man, the spirit will reach in and he'll grab your heart. You'll never be the same. That's the journey of calling. Who will answer the call? Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you you've given to every single one of us a piece of you to show. I thank you that the world needs to see our peace. That every single one of us God, contribute to this puzzle and that you want to make something of you so real, God, that that place becomes our home. Father, I just release right now a spirit of wisdom and revelation, God, that the eyes of their hearts would be opened, that they would grow in the knowledge of your son, God. Lord, we just put ourselves, we put our whole lives in your hands. We say, Holy Spirit, we don't want normal We don't want possible. We want impossible, God. Because with you, all things are possible. God, we want to hear your voice calling. And we say, here I am. Send me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whew. Guys got passionate putty today. I hope that's okay. We're going (laughs) to... 
we're gonna do um, we're gonna do a worship. We're gonna transition to worship. It's all worship, guys. The reason we gather is worship. There's just different forms of it, and we're gonna transition here to our offering and, and our kind of singing worship portion. So, ushers, why don't you go ahead and, and start? Um, you, you can start passing the bags if you like. One thought on offering I want to give you is this. You know, the way we treat our money is part of our general calling. It says, it says that God loves a generous giver. Why does he love a generous giver? Because he loves to see when his heart is in his kids. God is generous. For God so loved the world that he gave. Guys, you get to choose how to use your money. Why not use it like God does? Why not generously give? It would be enough to give to fund the dreams of God on this planet, but it can get better than that. You can represent him as you give. You can be Jesus to the world by the way you use your money. So give. It's a joy. And when God sees his heart in you, trust me, that money's coming back. Multiply it. It's good. We're going to do worship now, or we're going to sing now, and then we'll come on back up and pray for each other. Thanks, buddy. Um, would you please stand? We're just going to enter into a time of worship. We're just going to worship the one who has called us to life. Thank you, Jesus.
Love is calling us to sing that out. Love is calling us. Love is calling us. Love is calling us. Love is calling me. Love is calling me. Can you hear it? Love is calling me. His name is Jesus. Love is calling me. Love is calling me. Love is calling me. Thank you, Jesus. To life. To life. Thank you, Jesus. To life. His love. His love is deep. His love is wide. And it covers us. His love is fierce. His love is strong.
I will let 
I call you answer. 
lift him up. We still have one more song, but Jesus, you are worthy. Just say out your prayers to him. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy of all glory, all honor, all praise. Worthy is the lamb who is slain. We are free because of you. We are free what you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit's giving you glory is our desire. Worthy are you, our Lord, our God, to receive glory and power and honor from our hearts, ending and the start. All the creatures and the elders fall in worship. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, that is perfect. With justice and righteousness is how you judge your servants. Seated on the mercy seat, your holiness is what we seek. Father, your ways are higher than the ways of ours. Your anointed glow is brighter than the sun and stars. Destroyer of the darkness and all its hoes. The spirit river, cleanser of all our souls. Holy, 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 holy. holy. Is the Lord God Almighty. Almighty.
singing. Can we sing just like one, one short chorus? You guys know Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus? You know that song? I just feel like that's like this moment. So let's just sing that. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the
that when we see you, everything else grows dim. That when our heart sees who you are, that becomes our home. God, and that as we turn our eyes to you, we can see you. God, that you can be found when we seek you, you say you will be found. Thank you for meeting us here. We turn our eyes, we turn our lives to you, God. Yes. That the things of earth would become dim. In the light of you, in the light of living is you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God is just birthing some things in some people's hearts today. And and I I just want to give an opportunity for those people to respond. So if that's you, I want you to stay standing. And if not, I'm just going to ask you to sit for now. Because this is an important time. This is a time when God wants to begin to arrest people's hearts. And so if he's arresting your heart, And if he's beginning to make you a stranger and an exile, guys, I know I'm not really in control of myself right now. But it's worth it, guys. It's worth it. It's so good. There's no other way I'd live. There's nothing else I'd have. God, I bless those that are standing now. Let your fire come on them. Consume them, God. Grip their heart, God. Wreck their lives, God. Be real. Be more real than anything else. Be more real than the life that they have around them than their circumstances, God. Let them live from the perception of their heart. Make you their new home. You can be their home, God. They say yes. We say yes, God. We say yes. In Jesus' name, apprehend us, God. We don't hold anything back. We don't hold anything back, God. We put ourselves on the altar, God. We put ourselves on the altar. And we ask for your fire to come on our lives. God, be yourself through us to this world. Reveal you through us to this world. It's what our heart longs for. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. You can have a seat. We always close. Sorry if you've never seen this before. <laughs> I'm just a little racked by the Holy Spirit. It's all good. When God gets us, it's not always pretty, but it's always good. We just close our services by just taking some time to pray for each other. And we've got this this group of people that meet beforehand. We've got this awesome prayer meeting. this awesome prayer meeting that meets at 8.15 before the services. It's, it's amazing. And, and I'd invite all of you to come and, and we just pray and we say, God, what are you doing? And so we've got this list um, we're going to put up on the screens. These are things that we just, we believe God is breathing on. He wants to meet you. He wants to set your life right. He wants to make you whole. That's why he sent his son. And if you don't know that, if you don't know him, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I've got some friends over there that would love to do that. Andrew would, would love to just talk with you about what that means, what that looks like. If you're ready to take that step, help you take that step. And finally, you know, prophecy is so important in heading us towards our destiny. Prophecy can tell us who we are when we can't see it ourselves. So every, every service in this sermon series... We're just going to have over here, you can see there's a sign. We're going to have a bunch of people that are prepared just to minister prophetically, just to listen 
Say, God, what are you saying about this person? And share it with you. If you've never experienced that, I'd encourage you to go for it. Trust me, what God thinks about you is probably better than what you think about yourself. So you'll be encouraged. So let's do this. Everybody, everybody stand back up. I'm going to invite the prayer team forward, invite the prophetic team forward. And if any of this, if you'd like to respond to any of this, man, if you just want to say yes, God, yes, in whatever way, whatever that looks like for you today, come down here. The worship team is going to play one last chorus and um, feel free to come on down. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of I just thank you what you're doing in this season. I just release, God, a fresh season of destiny, a fresh season of stepping into our calling, of saying yes. Lord, we want everything you have for us. We want everything that you are. And we want to know how it is that we can show the world who you are in a way no one else can. So Holy Spirit, we need your help. We need you who come, reveal to us, grip our hearts, God. Thank you for today, God. Bless every person that's here. Bless them as they go, God. We want to go pee your face to the world we live in now. In Jesus' name, amen. Two, two last quick things. Um, newcomer welcome is today after this service. If you're new here and you just kind of want to learn a little bit more about the church and meet some of the pastors and stuff. That'll be uh, happening right after the service. I, I believe it's probably in C3. Free pizza lunch. We'd love to have you join us. And, and secondly, you know, the um, Identity to Destiny conference is next weekend. Guys, if this spoke to you, this is what the conference is going to be about. So come get a whole lot more from someone who's way more amazing and administering in this area than me. So that'll be awesome. You can still sign up at the bookstore or table out there or something like that. We'd love to see you there next weekend. Bless you guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us at Vineyard Live. You can find out more information about us at thevineyardchurch.us. See you next time.